This is John Arardi with the Cincinnati Enquirer. I'm joined today by Reds team historian Greg Rhodes to narrate this wonderful 3D animation by my colleague, Mike Nierges, graphics editor of the Cincinnati Enquirer. Well, this animation that we're about to see starts out in that deep right field corner. And you notice all those fans on the field, that's because they oversold the ballpark on that first opening day. And for years, decades, they put the extra fans out on the field on uh, opening day. The ballpark looks a little different from what you would remember from back in the 1950s and 60s because the stands down the foul lines are not yet double decked. They did not double deck those until 1939. But there are a lot of familiar features there, including the sun deck, the right field bleachers that were renamed the sun deck back in uh, the 50s. And then they decided they could also call it the moon deck at night. And of course, the uh, Great American Ballpark architects used the basic outline of that bleachers for the right field bleachers out at Great American Ballpark. And here we are at the ticket booth at Crosley Field. One of my favorite scenes at this ballpark was in 1947 when so many of the African-American fans rode trains into Cincinnati to watch Jackie Robinson play. And many sitting out in the bleachers. It was not a segregated stand. A lot of the black fans did sit out in the bleachers to watch Jackie Robinson, who made his debut here in 47. Of course, the Reds debuted their first African-American player in 1954 with Chuck Harmon. Now we're looking at the left field line, and that, of course, brings back memories of the terrace, that famous terrace, the slope uh, out in left field uh, that caused so many problems for so many outfielders for so many years, including everybody from Frank Robinson when he was a young rookie here to Yogi Berra in the 1961 World Series to even Babe Ruth, who played his final games uh, in the National League in 1935, stumbled while trying to track a ball down on that terrace. And Frank Robinson made the point that you actually had to climb up that terrace and you had to climb down it. Otherwise you'd wind up on your rear end. <laughs> <laughs> now we're behind home plate looking out towards center field. The dimensions of that ballpark when it first opened were huge, much bigger than they were later on because over time they moved home plate out twice. Once because they built field level box seats in 1925, I think it was, and those were right out at field level and so they extended home plate out a little bit then. And then Crosley was still one of the hardest parks to hit a home run in and they actually moved home plate out about another uh, 20 feet in the late 1930s. And the first player to hit a home run over the left field fence was uh, John Beckwith, a Negro League player in 1921, and later Pat Duncan, I believe, it was did it. The uh, Reds outfielder uh, finally did it in an official major league game uh, and during that 1921 season. Right. This was, the, you're looking here back at the, at the main grandstand behind home plate, and one of the things you notice there are the dugouts, and this was actually the first ballpark in Cincinnati. I mean, they've been playing baseball in Cincinnati for almost 50 years to that point, but this was the first time that the ballpark actually had a dugout. Before that, the players just sat uh, on benches on the field. The scoreboard uh, that you can see there out in deep left center field, that was always where the scoreboard was at Crosley Field. Of course, later it became much larger and much more elaborate. Fans will remember the biggest scoreboard began in 1957. A replica of that is at the uh, field in Blue Ash. Prior to 57, much smaller scoreboard, and Frank Robinson said uh, that scoreboard later cost him a lot of home runs. Well, this old ballpark, the animation certainly brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people saw their first games here at Crosley Field. There's a lot of family memories associated with it. It's a great atmosphere for baseball and a historic ballpark because it had so many firsts associated with it, including the first night game. All in all, a great way to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the building of Crosley Field.